we have an evening for us tonight that I think is the epitome of what the Paley Festival stands for. It's a show that has brilliant writing, a spectacular cast, wonderful innovative camera work. It is exactly what the Paley Festival is supposed to be all about. When it debuted in November, Fox's Arrested Development was hailed by many critics as the best new show of the season and one of the smartest comedies of recent years. Although dysfunctional families are not new to television, God knows, creator and executive producer Mitchell Hurwitz's approach in exploring the subject is both fresh and unique. Using handheld cameras, a documentary-like cinema verite style, and witty, non-judgmental narration, Arrested Development is one of the funniest and the most original satires on television. Before we start... Check, Mike, check, check. Hello, hello. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's, <laughs> I, it's hard to get a job off a of tape. And yeah. It's a weird fact that uh, like half the cast was cast from, from, from out of town, and Marsha DeBonis was the New York casting director, yeah. and... and really helped us a lot when because some Bell. of the harder parts we, we were having trouble finding um trying to finding lucille and we were having a lot of trouble finding um um will's part and i don't i think with will's part we were not looking at exactly like the right type and will kind of brought this sort of like macho energy <laughs> like like this cock of the roost <laughs> that like uh you know overcompensating Mark. yeah no, it's it's not a real <clears throat> what what sense right here no in other words <laughs> 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 but uh, Jessica and Tony and I uh, were at the network the very the same morning. It was I remember it was a Monday morning about a year ago. Right now, it was the New York morning. The New York morning yeah. at the network. Yes, yes. Yes, that's right. And uh, and when he walked in, actually, I we read with several Jobs. I think I was the only Lucille reading, yeah. but he walked in. We all went. That's the guy. And Jess Jessica and I had done a pilot before uh, together about five years earlier. Remember that? Lucked out on this one. <laughs> <laughs> this, this one's a lot better. <laughs> I'd like to hear both from, from the two of you, David and, and you, Mitchell, and also from the cast a little bit about sort of how does it work on a show where it's not completely scripted? Well, it, it, it is. It, it is. It is. It's rock solid, actually. Yeah. So no ad-libbing? You, you see very, very uh, little ad-libbing on this show, uh, if anything. I mean, a little bit maybe at the end and a little at the beginning of a line, just to give it that conversational sort of, you know, documentary feel overlapping and, and you know, keep it sloppy. But uh, it, it needs no no bothering with us. It definitely is a discovery period as we're, you know, it, even though we're using low tech, it does end up eating up a lot of time. So we get out there, we rehearse it a couple times, these guys start making the words comfortable for themselves. And, and there is some improv there, there is some, but it's, it's kind of rehearsed improv. You know, we'll, we'll come up with things that we'll stick with. Right. But I think that's a real testament to the writing on the show because in, in relation to other shows, you see how scripted and uh, this basic uh, uh, formula that's been used for decades and decades of kind of uh, here's the setup, here's the setup, here's the punchline, here's the tag to the punchline. And, and that uh, this, the writing, which is, as Jason was saying, is rock solid. I mean, you get it, these guys you know, work their asses off and, uh, and it doesn't feel like that at all. And it's still genuinely funny and it's real and the characters seem real even though they're broad and uh, I think that's a testament to the writing more than anything. I think it's a testament to the acting. There you go. Good combination. <laughs> Mitch keeps kind of making jokes I'm hoping about fighting for your life and ratings jokes and whatnot but if there is some truth to that, that that you really are having to I mean I guess every show has to fight that uphill battle but um, so what I'm hearing it, is that you don't think those jokes are funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, look for I laugh a because different area. well, I laugh because I consider it sarcasm, which to me is like one of my favorite types of humor. So they're okay. hysterical to me, Mitch. Um, Unclear. Um, but is it frustrating to you guys if that if there is truth there that I'm not that I don't personally know about? Is it frustrating? that you're doing something you love so much and you're not maybe getting the recognition for it? Well, we're get, certainly getting critical recognition and you guys uh, yeah, are but we, <laughs> to, you know, the Definitely. But this was you, but if it's like a network thing, does that get annoying to you or do you just feel like you're so happy to be doing this? I gotta say, my dream has always been to work on a show, regardless of what that show is, that holds Malcolm's numbers. 
And <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't happen, you move on. You move on. <laughs> it's, you know, we, we really do, we kind of live in this little bubble, and there's, there's so much in these productions, and, and we work so hard to get these scripts out that I, I really mean it sincerely when we're not that focused on the numbers. We're really not that discouraged about them. I think, I think Fox considers us a, a first-year show that, that needs to find an audience. Um, that Sunday at 9.30 spot has really never worked for anybody. Um, but we also, we don't know any better. You know, it's not like we at one point had a 20 share and now we're getting a 9 share. We're really, uh, we're just, we're building a little bit every week and it really is just more about, it's kind of corny to say, but it's more about doing the work. Well, this was one of the very first shows to sell out at our Paley Festival, so wow. I think that's, that's a wow. sign of good things. Wow. Wow. I see him way back there. Hi. Um, which came first? the title or the plot, and how did one evolve into the other? Yes, it's one of those titles that is like a little too clever. You know, it's, and... It's not uh, like cracking up, though. <laughs> 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 but it's a good example. It's a good example. It's a good example of what's wrong with this show. There, there are just too many, you know, that we actually had this idea that we were going to base this thing on a, on a housing development. And we also knew that we wanted people whose lives were really stunted by the fact that they had money. So it, it came up as a theme. that we, It just seemed like a funny play on words. Uh, and then it became the title. I'm not convinced it's a great title. It's, it's got more, it, it has more <laughs> syllables than any other title on television. <laughs> they like to make things shorter. Now on Fox they say, stay tuned for a new Arrested. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not, it's not sticking. <laughs> Next year, it'll be called Jason's Place. <laughs> you push the envelope with a lot of your humor on a lot of different topics. And um, I wondered, there's a little pushing of humor in, in gay areas. And I wondered if you'd gotten flack from anybody about that or any other area that you make fun of, I mean, that you poke at. I don't think we're, we're I know you hate it when I do this, but I don't think we're a big enough hit to, to have gotten flack yet. I don't, anybody, I'm sorry. But, you know, I mean, I, I don't think we have. And it's certainly, uh, we don't, I mean, we don't do anything mean-spirited. I mean, all the, the mean-spirited stuff is directed at these guys. It's directed at the characters. You know, it's, the, the joke is on them if they're making fun of the help as opposed to the joke being on the help or you know, if they're, if they're homophobic or whatever it is. So, um, but no, I mean, it's definitely, uh, it's all, it really is done with warmth. Yeah, you know, credit to the writing again. You know, somebody like um, um, uh, Archie Bunker, you know, here's a guy who made, you know, a lot of off-color comments uh, even earlier, but it was never really offensive because you looked at the source. And so, I mean, I think if, if, if my character said something that was disparaging about, about you know, an ethnicity or, or a minority, then you, you'd really have a, a good beef. But a lot of it comes out of ignorance. A lot of it goes to, you know, I mean, Jessica's just, you know, immaculate in the way she plays that character. And <laughs> you could just, you know, you could have her say anything. And she's so beautifully flawed. And so it's acceptable, <laughs> you know. So it's, it's a combination of the, the writing and the acting that makes it palatable, I hope. And, and I, I don't, we were actually discussing this earlier. Um, uh, I don't think... I can't I can't recall a uh, a joke that was disparaging against the uh, gay community. It's it's usually about the guy who's so oblivious, and there's a lot of kind of uh, you know kind of double entendres that the guy doesn't isn't aware of. But I don't think it's ever a pointed uh, disparaging uh, you know yeah, pejorative we saying, comment. Even in the pilot, you know that that was the the boat of homosexual protesters. <laughs> And, and they represented freedom. You know, they really were the, the plot point in a way. They were the, the, the example of how good life can be. Dancing, <laughs> holding signs. So, so we really did. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> outfits. <laughs> yeah. So it really was like. On the ocean. Uh, on, the, on the ocean. Plus, we got a, a gay person on the writing staff just to insure ourselves, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. We don't know which one. But we're, <laughs> we're assured he's yeah. there. We know he's there. Plus, yeah, everybody gets it, too. It's not just homosexuals, you know? It's, uh, you know, I, I think we've covered the gamut, you know? Everybody gets it, so. Black homosexuals, Hispanic homosexuals. <laughs> <laughs> you go after them. <laughs>